Good evening, I'm the Kitchen Witch and I'm here with a fun recipe for the fall season. Today we are going to do a stuffed acorn squash. I love acorn squashes because unlike butternut squash, it's not quite as sweet but it's also not quite as, I would say, bitter or plain as pumpkin can be. So it's a really nice middle squash and today we're going to be stuffing it with rice and sausage. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've done some of my prep work first. Make sure to look at the pictures that follow this video so that you can get some insight on how I did everything. This is my turkey sausage. It has mushrooms and onions in it, as well as a little bit of garlic. And I used a variety of spices for it. I used coriander, I used anise seed, thyme, black peppercorn, and fennel. What's great about that combination of herbs is that they are not only prosperous, but they are also protective. So this is a very good protective spell for you and your family. We're going to be taking that mixture and adding it to some rice. Now the important thing about doing rice with a squash is squashes tend to get very, very wet when you bake them. So by putting a little bit of rice into your mixture, it's going to help absorb all of that extra moisture. So when you're cooking your rice, you're going to want to make sure it's a little underdone. Don't put raw rice in there because it won't cook all the way. Make sure that it's a little bit al dente so it's got a little bit of room to grow. So our squash isn't very big, so we're only going to plan to do enough to really fill it. And I want to make sure that I've got more of the meat than I do the rice, so we're going to make sure we've got all that. So my meat mixture goes in with my rice. I want to make sure that gets mixed in really well. When I cooked my meat, I wanted to make sure that it was browned. I used plain ground turkey with no seasoning in it. That way all of my own spices come through in it. And I make sure it's browned. I make sure the onions have a nice caramelization on them. I like to cut my mushrooms up into a dice so that it kind of stretches a little bit. And that mushroom gives it a really fantastic earthy flavor. Now, I also crush all of my herbs and spices myself using a mortar and pestle. I have a little bit left over. I usually do about a teaspoon of each one in its whole form, throw it in, crush it down, use about half in my meat mixture, and then I'm going to add the other half at this point. And when we're adding herbs to our meals, that's when the magic really takes place. I'm going to take that moment, feel the intention of prosperity, feel the intention of protection flowing all the way through us from our toes to our nose and out through our fingertips into the herbs, giving them a life. I'm just going to put that intention right on in. Now the thing to remember about herbs and spices is when you cook them, they start to lose their fragrance and they start to lose their flavor. So the reason that we put half in with the meat and then half in before we bake is so that we're reinforcing those flavors and really making sure that they shine. So we've got those mixed in as well. Now the thing to remember about acorn squash is that they are not very big squashes. So, if you're feeding more than one or two people, you are definitely going to want more than one acorn squash. For my partner and I, this is enough food. But for an army, you might want to invest in three or four of these guys. Now to cut this open, I like to cut them like I do with a pumpkin. I like to use a serrated knife to start, and then I use a flat edge cooking knife to kind of try and get that straight line. So I'll start by putting a nice groove into it, then go in with the knife and really get a nice slice through. Once I have the lid off, make sure to pull out all your seeds and guts. 
and kind of give it a nice rounded shape, get all the roughness out so that you've got a nice clean open squash to work with. Now, later this week we will be roasting all of our seeds from all of our squashes that we're going to eat this week. So make sure to get those cleaned and separated and into a container and keep them in the fridge. We want them to maintain their freshness until we're ready to bake them. All right, so once we've got our squash opened and we've got it all cored out, we're going to drizzle it with olive oil. The important thing to remember is to do olive oil not only on the outside, but the inside as well. And I like to just use my hands. I know a lot of people don't necessarily like to get messy in the kitchen, but I sure do. So I put a little on the inside and just roll that around so that it kind of gets a little bit of coverage. Then I'll take my hand and just start to bring that to the outside edge. And you actually want to go all the way around the outside of your squash. What this is going to do is make sure that your squash doesn't just start to burn or turn to mush. You want to make sure that it's protected from the heat source just a little bit. All right. You're also going to want to make sure you do your lid because our lid is going to go back on top. Just kind of rub that in there. Da da da. Fantastic. With all that done, this is when I usually take a minute to go ahead and preheat my oven. I like to bake mine low and slow, so about 325 to 350 degrees. Keep in mind, if you've got a gas stove, you probably want to go for a lower temperature. If you've got an electric stove, you want to go for a higher temperature. Um, working with fire always makes a big difference in the way that it dries out. So a lower temperature is going to do much more good in that gas stove. Um, depending on what kind of baking dish you're going to use, I have a bunch of these little wide casserole dishes. They're really great. I just like to remember to do a, an aluminum ring. And just put that in there. That way my squash is going to sit evenly when it's in the oven. We don't want it to turn sideways. We want to make sure that it sits upright and keeps everything inside of it, right? And then we can stuff it. Now you can stuff your squash in with anything you want. I like this combination because it works so well with the herbs. And just a reminder, be sure to look at the pictures. It's got the a breakdown of all the things I've put into this mixture. And really pack that in there. Don't be afraid to, to really get it nice and full. I like to use my hands more than not, so we're just going to get that in there. Now if you play your cards right, you should get a nice, well-stuffed squash. Look at that. Beautiful, right? I'm just going to put that right here. Grab hold of our lid and just make sure that that's sitting evenly. We're just going to push that down a little bit, make sure it's nice and snug. It's okay if there's a gap here, so you're going to want to let a little bit of the steam out as it's baking. I'm going to bake this. I have an electric stove to work with, so I'm going to end up baking mine for about an hour at 350 degrees. And there it is. Make sure to check it occasionally. You're going to want to take the top off. And you're going to want to make sure to prick your actual squash along the edge. What we're, because all this is already cooked, what we're waiting for is for our squash to get nice and soft so that when you're breaking into it, the edges just peel right out. They just scoop out really nice and really soft and add that wonderful flavor to the whole meal. And there it is, guys. The first of my three squashes, my little acorn squash. I hope you all enjoy it. I am the Kitchen Witch, and I am wishing you all a good meal and a good evening. Blessed be.